Hello mate, welcome back. In this video we're going to take the location renders that we started working on in the last video and we're going to turn them into something useful. Before I get started, a huge thank you to everybody for subscribing and hitting that notification icon, that really helps me out. And of course an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons because your names will be running across the bottom of the screen at the end of the video. So what we've got here is a render that I did during my last live stream of a kind of waiting room style location. And this would be a background that will show on the screen using the procedures and methods that we've already created in our game. But what we also have is the ability to add buttons to our screen. What we need, of course, is to be able to actually create those buttons. So the first thing that we want to do is go to our image settings, change our image size so that it's actually 1920 by 1080. Like so, and then we hit enter and then it's gonna press control zero just to bring it up back to full size. And now the image will fit our game. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick out some items in our scene and we're going to turn them into PNG, transparent PNGs that we can use as buttons in our screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our polygonal lasso tool, which is the third tool here down. And what we're going to do is we're going to click and we're going to select an object. I'm going to use the vending machine as our first object. And I'm just going to make sure that I get the whole of that object selected here like so. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this button here. And what you can see there is I've missed out, out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift I'm going to press escape, I'm going to press control Z, and then it brings our selection back up, then I'm going to hold shift, and I'm just going to reselect the area that I might have accidentally missed out. There we go, like that. Now that's part of the selection. So now when I go to the mask button, you can see that that masks that out quite nicely. And then all we have to do is go to file, and we can go to export, and we're going to go to export as. You could do a quick export as PNG if you wanted to, but I'm just doing this for the sake of making sure that I get all the selections correctly. So we're gonna go with transparency, smaller file size. We're gonna make sure that our height and width are correct, 1920 by 1080. And then we're just going to hit export. Then it's gonna bring us up to our game images file. And we can see here that there's map icons. We're actually going to come out of there and we're going to go to new. Uh, in fact, we're gonna do it inside the UI file. We're gonna to go to new folder and then we're just going to click location underscore buttons like so and then we're going to click inside there and then in this one we're going to go with the a new folder and this one's going to be called waiting underscore room like so and that just means that we can keep our icons separate and then we can go waiting room underscore vending underscore machine and then we can save that as a PNG file. That's going to have a bit of a think for a moment and then it's going to bring us back to here. Now we're going to hit Control Z again and lo and behold, all of our stuff comes back. So just for fun, I'm going to select this picture and I'm going to follow through with the exact same procedure like so. So now we've got that, we can go to File, we can go to Export, Export As. That's going to have a bit of a think again. Notice it saves the settings that we used last time, so we can just go to export. We've now got waiting room underscore picture underscore zero one because we've got three of them and we can click on save there. Same as before, and we're gonna go control Z and we can unselect that and we can start working with this one. Now notice I'm not being particularly fussy about making sure that my selections are absolutely spot on and that's because it really doesn't matter the, cat, the, the, the average player is not going to sit there checking whether or not the pixels are completely perfect. They're just going to want to know that if they hover over the picture, are you going to get the picture um, tooltip? And if you click on it, are you going to get the correct thing? So again, here we go. We've got our selection correct. We're going to hit export. And this time we're going to go waiting room underscore picture underscore zero two. Hit save give that an export control Z and then we can go through and do the same thing for the final picture and the cool thing is that what we can do is have it so that when the person clicks on the picture then maybe you get a shot of the picture from a different angle maybe you get a close-up of it or whatever it doesn't matter it's really 
this is how we add life to our universe. This is how we um, make the player feel like they're part of something better and they're not just trying to make the correct selection to get through the story. If you want to make a game where that's the case, then just make a game with no interactivity whatsoever. Just make it a straight up visual novel where you just click to see the next line of text. And then we've got that one. We could do the same thing for this guy. This guy's a little bit of an awkward shape. So what I'm going to try and do is use the quick select tool here and see if we can get that. That's pretty good to be fair. It's not far off what I want. I want to just include the bottom of the bin as well. Just make my tool a bit smaller and then just come around and select it. The problem with the reason I don't tend to use this very often is that it can be a bit hit and miss if it's a complex shape. So we've got that whole bin selected. We're going to hit that there. Notice that I've still got the doggy selected so we can go control Z. And then if we come back to our marquee selection tool and hit alt, then we can just remove that from our selection. And there we go. Now we can go to file, export, export as, and this can be like trash can one or something. Hit export, hit waiting room, underscore trash can underscore zero one hit save and then that will save it back in there and then we can do the same thing for this trash can over here let's just make sure that we deselect that first trash can and then we can come in and just make sure that we get that nice and what you can see there is that it's accidentally selected a portion of the wall as well so if we hit out and we just run that up the side there that's cool again it hasn't got to be perfect just got to be as close as you can get it then you hit masking there file export export as and so on and we can have as many buttons in this room as we want we could have every single inch of this room having some kind of interactivity if we wanted to personally i don't want to because that would be uh, a massive pain in the bum but i'm going to do the things that you think would be interactive are going to be interactive now we can come back to our polygonal lasso tool and we can just select the water fountain nicely like that and there we go export export as give it a moment to have a think export and we get waiting room water underscore fountain and there's only one water fountain so we don't need to add a number to that save it control set again so we've got the d's now we could do the doors why why won't why don't we do the doors let's well now this we do have to be a little bit finicky about because we don't really want it clashing with the bin so i would advise being a little bit more careful with it but there you go we've got a reasonable selection there mask it out boom file export and we can do this as waiting room underscore door underscore zero one and the beauty of the system that we've created in our rempi code is that we can actually set this door to either be an item or to be a navigation so if you were to click on this door and you had it set to nav you could actually have it change to another location which is pretty swish i think you'll find so we just and it doesn't matter if they overlap slightly because because we're not deleting or moving pixels, all we're doing is selecting them and, and, and nominating them as being part of an item. If two images have the same pixel, it'll just be whichever one gets drawn second is the one that will be considered to be the icon, which is also pretty useful. So if you keep going through this process, you'll see that once we actually put the, button, the buttons in, to the game you'll see how intuitive we've made the system that we've written so that it compensates for any little fluff ups that we make whilst we're in our code now i'm gonna just come back to this door and this one's going to be a little trickier because it's very close and you can't actually see the bottom of it so we're just going to do the top portion of that door like that and again, notice that some of these things are really small and insignificant, and you can even have hidden items in the game, which can be quite a fun thing to add. And you know, people have to search and find the thing that they're looking for. So we go to a waiting room door 03. Save that. 
Control Z. So we've got all of these items here. We can now do the couch if we wanted to. So let's do that. Let's just select it. It hasn't got to be perfect. You can just, as long as you get the majority of it inside your selection, it's fine. And you can even ignore the plant if you want to. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna ignore the plant and the table on account of the fact that I don't have any plans to make either of those interactive. So we can just work around them. It's fine. If you wanted to, you could be really fussy about selecting the couch and not selecting the table and having the table as a separate item or whatever you wanted. Waiting room couch, save that. Control Z again. So we've got pretty much everything, but what I am going to do is I'm going to include this window as a button as well, just for poops and giggles, really. Just select these windows here, like so. Notice that it's partially clashing with the vending machine, but again, it doesn't matter. Mask out that area. And we're going to just go to export there like that. Export as. Wait for it to have a think. And go to waiting room underscore window and save. So there we go. We've got a good number of uh, buttons there, which we're going to code in in the next episode. But you see the process. You can do the same thing for any other areas or any other environments that you've created. Hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.